on the frozen banks of the Red Cedar, we finally have MSU Gymnastics once again in East Lansing for the first time since January 30th, 2021. Hi everybody, I'm Onosis and that's Abby Larson. We are excited to bring you a tri meet here against the number 11 Michigan State Spartans, Bowling Green and Illinois State. Let's break down a key player from each team, starting off with Bowling Green and Emily Castiglia. Yeah, Emily, she comes from a very prestigious gym of North Stars Gymnastics Academy in New Jersey. She has exquisite form and her lines are beautiful, so I'm excited to see what she has here tonight. Now let's flip it over to the Redbirds. Last time out, they had 191.6 final score. A big key player in that one was Jay Mack. Yeah, I've known Jay Mack since she was five years old. She's competing floor and vault here for the Redbirds tonight, and she has not gotten any less powerful since she was five years old. She looks like she's wearing trampoline shoes. It's really easy for her. And finally, for the Michigan State Spartans, last time out, they had a new school record for season opening score with 195.875. Skyla Schulte was a big factor in that one. Yeah, Skyla is very high on the coach Mike Rose radar here tonight because she had competed in all four events in her first ever college meet, which is a huge deal. You do not see that very often. So Coach Rowe calls her a real gamer. She is not here to mess around and she is going to bring us a performance tonight. Schulte is also one of the Big Ten gymnasts to watch heading into the season. Gabriella Steven as well was on that list. Let's look at the rotation order for the three teams. Starting out on vault is Michigan State. And then MSU will head over to the bars, beam, and then floor. So just looking at that order, who really has the advantage for Michigan State when they're starting out on vault? Yeah, I mean, like every other sport, um, the you want to give the advantage to the home team, and ending on floor is definitely the advantage. It's the most high energy, most crowd engaging uh, event. So, Michigan State definitely has the advantage there. Anyone ending on beam, doing beam towards the end of their rotation, definitely has the downside of that because the beam is really make it or break it. You can um, really have the event of your life, or you can have three routines that get fallen on and you ruin your whole meet. So it's really important um, being home for Michigan State today. Just looking around, starting out on vault for Michigan State, the order currently is Delaney Harkness, Lauren Shu, Bailey Garcia, Ashley Hoflick, Skyla Schulte, Gabrielle Steffen, and Katie Sawyer is the exhibition. So that's something interesting to watch for Michigan State. Of course, the Spartans had a really good last meet. We just talked about it, but Mike Rowe, he's in his fifth season as head coach, eighth season overall on the Spartan coaching staff. He has coached five all Big Ten gymnasts. And something that he talked about earlier that was really interesting that the majority of these sophomores from Michigan State are almost like freshmen, that they only had one other home meet before their season was canceled because of COVID. They only had two total, and then of course they had the one last week on Sunday. So that's gonna be something interesting to watch. Yeah, definitely. And coming home to your home, everything, you have your home bed, your home routine, it's really important. And getting the confidence under your belt at any arena is really important. So they basically have two freshman classes here and they're very talented, but when it comes to high pressure situations, it's very interesting and it's very, hard to get perfected. So there will be a lot of, I'm sure, interesting things to happen tonight with both of those classes, but it helps that they do have juniors and seniors that are more experienced with the high pressure situations to help out with those nerves. And with the Spartan starting on, out on vault, what kind of things are the judges looking for when scoring this? Yeah, definitely the judges are working and looking at stuck landings unique vault there from Delaney Harkness. Um, they're looking for stuck landing, so no steps or just a slight hop. Um, you wanna bend your knees when you land so that you don't hurt yourself, but you also wanna keep your chest up. So if your chest is not up on the landing, you will get deducted for that. And then another one of the big things that the judges are looking for is amplitude, which you can obviously tell Delaney had a lot of amplitude, so hopefully the judges don't take anything off from that. But yeah, mostly the stuck landing because that's the last thing they see and that's the last thing that's stuck on the judge's mind when they give her a score. 
Last time out, Harkness had a 9.775 on vault in the first meet. And now Lauren Shu is about ready to go. And Delaney's vault is definitely a unique one. Um, you mostly see a Yurchenko, some type of twist or layout, um, but she does a twist onto the vault table, which you don't see very commonly, but she does it very well. Lauren Shu made her Spartan debut with the tri meet last week and tied for fourth on vault with a 9.825. Chu also a freshman from Austin, Texas, as we're waiting for her to get the green light. You can see our teammates trying to hype her up. They're at home, they gotta get excited. Gymnastics is all about excitement, getting those nerves out of the way and replacing it with some excitement. I mean, you can only imagine what's going through her head right now. First home meet, solid crowd out here. It's always good to see the fans back. Last year, of course, they weren't able to attend. Only friends and family were able to come. And now this year, as long as you meet the vaccination requirements, you're allowed to watch the meet. This is one of the hardest parts about gymnastics is waiting for the scores to come out because it could be 15 seconds, the judges know exactly what you're gonna get, but it could also be five minutes and your mindset is you're ready, but you gotta wait. But here she goes now. Oh, a beautiful Yurchenko full. Little step forward on the landing. Looks like she's happy with it. Team, let's go over to congratulate her. So we get another look at it. She got a really nice block off the table that allowed her to get that amplitude that the judges are looking for. Little slight leg separation on the table, but it's such a vast fault. Um, sometimes the judges miss that, so hope for that. Bailey Garcia waiting for her turn. Sophomore from Boynton Beach, Florida. She won the beam title at the tri meet last time out. She scored a 9.9, .9, tying her for a career best for the beam. But she has, she goes out for vault this time, and then it's a last time for her was a 9.825. She's coming up with a Yurchenko full, just like Lauren just did. Over on beam while we wait for the judges on vault. Here's Illinois State. That's Doctor doing her routine right now. Beautiful. Another Yurchenko full. She really had a controlled landing. I think the judges will like that one. Vault's a really tough event because. If, even if you start on it, your excitement, your nerves, it's easy to get it out all on the, on the vault table, but it's really hard to stick that landing, if, especially if you're nervous and you're shaky. So being confident on your landing is real important. And that was Garcia's first attempt with a, a, a real crowd here at home because she's one of those sophomores that only had one of those home meets. Yeah, so that was a good vault for her to start at home.
So Garcia, it appears, got a 9.8 for her score. Delaney Harkness got a 9.725 on her first attempt, and Lauren Shu got a 9.65. So Garcia leads the way currently for the Spartans on the vault. Beautiful, You're another Yurchenko full. Very controlled landing. I'm sure she'll be very happy with that one. That was Ashley Holflick. She celebrates with her team. Great block off the table. Huge college finish, which we love to see. Hopefully she's one of those, she's one of those seniors that has this home meet advantage thing under her belt. So I'm sure she's helping out all these freshmen and sophomores with their nerves and keeping them excited throughout the meet. Of course, and she's also a team captain as well, a leader on the Spartan squad. It's really important in gymnastics because once one thing goes wrong with a team, someone falls on a beam routine, someone steps out of bounds on floor, it can go all downhill from there. So team captains like Ashley have to keep the team on their toes and rally to make a good finish. Ashley scored a 9.775. Wow, there's Skyla Foria. She is very powerful. That is her first routine at home, and she is just an excitement, ball of excitement. So it'll be exciting to see her on the other events. Another great block off the table, great landing. She's loving that college finish. Now, when you say college finish, what kind of what does that mean compared to, I guess, other levels of gymnastics? Yeah, so it's a huge jump going from club gymnastics or elite gymnastics to college gymnastics because it is all about the excitement, all about getting the nerves away and having fun with your team. Club gymnastics is more about individually placing, and as much as you want your team to do well, it's very much individually focused. Um, but the college finish is not something you see in club gymnastics or elite gymnastics. It's basically just a very exaggerated um, present at the end of every routine just to encapsulate your whole routine and show the judges that you were excited and you were happy with what you gave them. So Skyla Schulte, her score was a 9.775 which is currently tied for second on the Spartans. Oh, beautiful landing for Gabrielle Steven. The yep. Urchenko full is the most common vault that you'll see in college gymnastics, although it starts at a 9.95 start value. A lot of gymnasts choose to go that route instead of upgrading to a 10-0 start value vault where it's more risky of a landing and more deductions. So you see that a lot with Michigan State's team and you will throughout the meet. Like I said, it's very much a team sport. There's Bowling Green getting ready for their teammate to go on bars. There's that Yurchenko full again. Slight hop on the landing, but she was competing exhibition, so I'm sure she'll be happy with that. You'll see a lot of exhibition routines um, this meet just to get these freshmen and sophomores accustomed to competing in this arena and under this high pressure. An exhibition spot is basically 
a routine that doesn't count towards the scores for the team, but it's basically just a practice routine under this environment. Katie Soar, who is that exhibition girl. She's a freshman from North Reading, as she attended Lexington Christian Academy, and she's just continuing to try to work on her skills and whatnot. Last meet, she had a 9.65 on vault. Here's Illinois State on beam again. It's Maya Robinson. Beautiful series. Switch side to a flutter jump, her leap connection that she needs. Beam is all about having confidence. Even though it's only four inches wide, you gotta make it look like it's not. She's doing a great job on that right now. Gainer full dismount. She'll be happy with that routine. That was beautiful. Robinson, freshman from Lake F Worth, Florida. So we get another look at her landing. Backhands bring back layout, step out series, and that gainer full dismount, and the college finish. Leah Mitchell, senior captain, getting taped up and ready as Michigan State, getting ready to their next event as we get a look at some of the scores. Harkness had a 9.725, Shu 9.675. And just looking at those scores, what's your kind of thoughts and just overall performance of the Michigan State Spartans on ball? Yeah, I think they should be really happy with that. They will get to drop the lowest score, which is the 9.675, with the event total coming to a 48.925. Anywhere around a 49 is really good for Michigan State. They had great scores on this event at the last meet, and I think they will be pretty satisfied with these scores today. Really? As we will take a quick break, as you are watching gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
as we continue right now. Michigan State still waiting to take their turn. Next they will have bars. Bowling Green will move over to Beam. Beam. Yeah. Looks like we got one or two more girls on bars and beam for Illinois State and Bowling Green. She scores a 9.725. Here's Illinois State on B. This is Heard. Nice aerial. She goes with her series. Back handspring layout step out. Oh. Wobbled that led to a fall right there. Looked like she was a little off in her back handspring. That made her go crooked. Jump series. So even though she had that fall, she's still got to convince the judges that she's still confident up there on that four inch piece of wood. Third f finishes her routine, the sophomore from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Pretty shoot over to a toe hecked, back to the high bar. It's a dismount, blindfold double tuck, just a little bit of a step. Here's a repeat of that toe hect back to the high bar, completing that requirement. You have to go from high to low and then back from low to high. High fives all around. As we will take a quick break, Michigan State will head over to bars as you are watching Gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back to Jensen Fieldhouse after round one as we get a look at Illinois State's balance beam scores. Fox led the way with the 9.7. Just kind of what's your thoughts on those scores? Yeah, I mean, they look really good. The 9.8 from Maya Robinson, that was a really pretty routine. Um, they looked pretty solid. No major, major issues except for the one fall. But starting on beam is not easy, just as ending is on it isn't. So I'm sure they're really glad they got that event out of the way. Now they have the fun event, I like to call it, on floor. They get to really show off their, their attitudes and their personalities through their floor routines. It's a lot less um, nerve wracking since you're not on four inches of balance beam. You get the whole floor to move around, so. So if you had to rate the difficulty of the four events, what would you rate them? I think they're all very, very different. Um, beam is definitely the most nerve wracking, but it's a very mental event because obviously the gymnasts can do all the skills um, on the floor, but then getting up on that beam, it's a lot scarier. Um, bars is a lot about strength, um, upper body strength, core strength, basically just keeping your entire body off the ground. So that is definitely a very, you need to be really strong in your arms and your core for that event. Mm -hmm. And then floor and vault, I'd say, are probably the most similar. Um, they're all about power and being able to run fast and getting power out of your legs. Um, so I think it's pretty hard to say which one's the hardest. I'm sure each gymnast has their own opinion about that. Uh, I think bars is definitely the hardest for me, but again, every gymnast is different, so. And then just looking at the scores for the uneven bars for Bowling Green, some solid scores up there. Just kind of, what's your breakdown of that? Yeah, I mean, there are some low nines. Um, bars definitely, you get the most deductions on bars. Um, hitting handstands is huge. I saw a couple missed handstands from Bowling Green, and unfortunately that's a pretty big deduction. Uh, the judges are looking for that, and they're looking for landings. So um, if they had any steps or hops on the landings, that's what took those scores down from those 9-8 areas to the 9-4 area. Michigan State getting ready for their turn on the bars as we get the competition order. Stevenson is gonna lead the way, the freshman, then Jory Jacker, the junior, Bailey Garcia, then Leah Mitchell, Senior captain Skyla Schulte is going to be fifth, and then Delaney Harkness, the sophomore, will anchor. It's a very young lineup, as you can see. A lot of those freshmen and sophomores that have not yet competed here at home. So I'm excited to see what they have in store for us here on bars. Here's Gabrielle Steven, beautiful Maloney. There's her low bar to high bar requirement. Nice shoot over to handstand, right into a toe circle to high bar. Little short on that handstand. Blindfold double back, good landing. Good start to Michigan State's bar rotation. So just the overall look at the meet after the first event, Michigan State leading the way 48.925, and then slightly behind them is Illinois State with a 48.65, and then Bowling Green rounding it out with a 47.425. Here's a look at her dismount one more time, a blindfold into a double back. Co Coach Mike Rouse hoping for that stick. Here's Illinois State on the floor. Isabel Fox going through her routine. And then it will be a Labatt. Fox the senior. 
Beautiful double pike to finish it off. Like I said, Floor is all about the performance. She is doing a great job getting the crowd engaged, and that was a really solid routine for her. As Michigan State gets ready for bars, what kind of things are the judges looking for for point deductions and whatnot? Yeah, I'd say definitely the most important thing on bars is hitting your handstands. Whether it be a cast handstand or a toe handstand or a blindfold handstand, you have to hit the handstands. You have to be within 10 degrees of exactly vertical for the judges not to deduct anything. Um, all the college gymnasts start at a 9-4, and you have to get the difficulty built up in your routine to get a higher start value. So they're definitely looking for major releases, twisting dismounts, any type of those things that make the routine more difficult makes their start value higher. Mm -hmm. Joy Jacker, 5-1 from Hazlitt High School, junior. Beautiful straddle Jaeger. Hit that handstand before her shoot over to low bar. She prepares for her dismount, blindfold, double back. Slight hop on the landing, another great routine for Michigan State. So we get another look at it. Beautiful shoot over to handstand. That's the type of thing the judges want to see. They want to see those handstands. Handstands everywhere. A little bit short on that one into her double back dismount, but a pretty solid landing and a pretty routine. Just get a look at Bowling Green on the beam. Prepares for her series. Back handspring layout step out. Little bobble on the landing. Travel jump. There's a front toss on beam, one of my favorite skills. Here's her dismount, round off one and a half twist. Pretty solid landing. I'd say that's a pretty good routine. Here's Illinois State on floor. One and a half into a punch front layout. Really getting the crowd involved. Dancing like she's a dancer. This is exactly what the judges want to see. Having fun with it. Here's Bailey Garcia on bars. Beautiful Maloney. Little short on that handstand. Good shoot over. A little bit short on that handstand as well. Blind full into a double layout. Wow, and a stuck landing. That was a great routine from Bailey. Short on a couple handstands, but she hit that last landing, and the judges will definitely remember that. Little bit short on the shoot over. 
at blindfold was to handstand, though. Right into a double layout. That is really impressive without getting that momentum from the Giants. She does it straight out of a blindfold. That takes a lot of upper body strength. So you talked about Garcia's kind of big routine right there. How much momentum, I guess, would you say, is it for a gymnast to have a really good routine and then the next one to follow as well? Yeah, it's definitely, again, college gymnastics is such a team sport that you want someone to start off each rotation as someone who's really solid on the event and can bring the energy up. And it's kind of a snowball effect, but it can either go one way or the other. If people keep hitting their routines, then your teammates are more likely to hit theirs. But if you fall, then it kind of can go really wrong really quickly. Yeah. Give a front aerial into a split jump. Slight wobble on the full turn. Handspring into a back one and a half twist with a stuck landing. She looks pretty happy with that routine. So far for Michigan State, for bars, Gabrielle Steffen has a 9.775, and Jory Jackard has a 9.85. Yeah, that's a huge score for Jory. 9.85 on bars. A Definitely senior. a great score and a great routine for her and for Michigan State. Senior leader. Leah Mitchell, about ready to go. Leah is beautiful on this event. Right off the bat, hits that handstand to a Maloney. Right back down to the low bar to a shoot over. Fighting for that handstand, she definitely hit it. Again, fighting, double, blindfold into a double back, slight hop. Pretty routine from Leah Mitchell. Here's a look at that Maloney again. That is a skill that definitely requires some arm strength, you have to Keep yourself all the way from the low bar, all the way up to that high bar with just your arms and your shoulders. Billy Garcia, her score was a 9.7 on the bars. She's currently third on Michigan State for that event. Bowling Green on beam. So far on beam for Bowling Green, Abelnick has a 9.5 and Castiglia has a 9.775. Beautiful. Her routine is really quick, but she definitely makes a lasting impression. Powerful handstand to some powerful giants into a double layout. Slight hop. That's a great start for her on bars. Skyla Schulte right there. She just looks like she's having so much fun, and that's what it's all about. It's really good to see as well from a freshman, especially in her first home meet. Definitely containing that excitement. She'll get to let it all out once she goes to floor. A 
Those Giants are so powerful. She goes so fast around that bar. Little pike down on the dismount, but I don't think the judges will have seen that. Here's Illinois State on floor with a double pipe. Great landing. And a super fun routine. Floor is cool because you get to really make your choreography to fit your personality. So whether you're a shy, quiet person and you don't like to dance, or you're a very outgoing person, you can make your routine to whatever fits you. Here's Delaney Harkness on bars. Beautiful first handstand. To a toe hand into a ginger. You can just tell she is squeezing her legs and pointing her toes so tight. Her form is perfect. Another great handstand. Dismount to finish it off. And a half in, half out. Wow. A little bit step on the landing, but Pretty solid routine for Delaney Harkness. Her Nick Harkness was the anchor for Michigan State, and then Sydney Ewing will be the exhibition. Back to beam for Bowling Green. Good full turn. Preparing for her series. Back handspring, back handspring, step out. No wobbles, that was really solid. This is Taylor Jensen. Jump connection, those the judges are definitely on beam looking for 180 splits. You definitely get deducted if your splits or your leaps are not at exactly 180. So she did a great job with that. Side aerial connection. Slight bobble. She's doing a great job at convincing the judges that she is confident up there. Preparing for her dismount. That was a really pretty routine for Bowling Green. This is the 5'5 senior from Ellen High School from Frisco, Texas, Sydney. That was a great bar routine. Exhibition spot is used for practice, just to get your nerves out and to feel what it's like to be competing in arena like at Jenison Fieldhouse. Just like I said earlier, you can tell she loves having fun and dancing, so this Floor routine definitely fits her personality and I think her team likes it too. Got her team cheering her on for this pass. Front layout into a Rudy which is a one and a half front twist. And 
finishing it off. That was a really solid routine, especially ending on a hard pass like that. Beautiful series. Over 180 split leap and split jump. Little turn, little, little bit of a wobble. Another front toss, one of my favorites. Preparing for her dismount, a round off, double back. Wow, and a great landing. That is a really tough dismount to do. So far for Bowling Green on the beam, Abelnick has a 9.5, Castigli has a 9.775, Ross has a 9.625, and Caruso has a 9.750. There's that double back dismount again. You do not see that that often. That is a really, really tough dismount to do, especially at the end of a beam routine. Floor and beam definitely take the longest because they're the longest routine. So the judges have more and more to look at and potentially to deduct from. So you'll find that it takes a lot more time to complete the events floor and beam than it does bars and vault. So we got a couple more on beam and floor for Illinois State and Bowling Green. There's George Jacker getting ready for the balance beam. Wildbacher scores a 9.75 for Bowling Green. It's a really good score for that Von Beam. dance right there, incorporating that in. Beam's all about being flowy. You want to flow from one skill to the next using dance. And that's, help, that's what helps build your confidence. Beautiful series, light wobble at the end. Side aerial, another little bit of a wobble. As you see, she played that wobble off into her dance to try and trick the judges that that's what she was supposed to do. Switch side split jump, her leap connection. Here's her dismount. A uh, front full. Almost a stuck landing. Just a little bit of a movement on her left foot there. Here's J Mac on the floor. You'll get to witness her fake trampoline shoes in action. She is so bouncy. Beautiful pass. You can see a little bit of her personality coming out in this full routine.
sometimes it's really hard for freshmen to come out of their shell and do a floor routine like this, but Jay Mack does an amazing job. And obviously you know her and whatnot, but just based on her routine and whatnot, what kind of personality can you just grab from that sort of thing? You can just tell by the dance that she's a very bubbly and she's just a very excited person and she looks like she's having fun. She loves her gymnastics. Her team liked it too. So we take a, just a look at the Spartans on the bar. Some of the highlights here. Michigan State will finish with a 48.975 on the bars. So close to that 49. Still a great score for the Spartans. As it was Harkness and Jackard with a 9.85 on the bars that led the way for the Spartans. Really impressive performance from them. As we will be back, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
Welcome back to Jensen Fieldhouse, where Michigan State currently leads 97.9, Illinois is behind 97.2, and then Bowling Green is at 96.1. As we get a look at the scores, Bowling Green, Illinois State, excuse me, is currently the floor exercise, solid performance there, just kind of what's your breakdown on that? Yeah, definitely the highlight is J Max 9875 there at the end. She's so powerful and she definitely caught the judge's eye with her dance and choreography. So that was definitely a great way to end the floor rotation for Illinois State as they carry it on to their next event of all. Now over to Bowling Green. That will next 9.5 will be dropped and then everyone else had a solid performance. Yeah, definitely. Those high nine sevens, those are really good to see. It means very little mistakes, just some bobbles, some balance checks here and there, but definitely a good way to go on that beam rotation with no falls. And then finally, the Spartans, that overall scored a 48.975 Harkness and Jackard both had 9.85s. Yeah, those are huge scores. Definitely because they hit those handstands and stuck those dismounts. The judges are really impacted by those last seconds. Whatever you do in the last couple seconds of your routine, that is their lasting impression. The Spartans get ready to tackle beam. The beam rotation. Gianna, the sophomore, will lead it off, then Harkness, then Stefan, then Mitchell, Schulte, and then rounding it out is Garcia. Once again, a very, very young lineup here on Beam, which is huge because Beam is definitely the event that these nerves in front of all these people can definitely get to you. So we'll see how these freshmen and sophomores take this test. And then for Illinois State, vault competition order. Started off with Doctor the senior, and then Hurd, Donovan, Laster, Mack, and Labbitt to round it off. They've got a very young lineup as well, so I'm sure the coaches are excited to see what these young girls have to offer for their team. And then finally for Bowling Green, the floor exercise, Chan, Bannister, McNamara, Castiglioli, Wildback and Jensen to round it out. I'm sure they're excited to be on this event. Illinois State currently is slightly behind with a point seven behind Michigan State. Here's Gianna on the beam. Getting ready for her series. Handspring, handspring, layout stuff, but oh, she's just a little bit off. That's big. Starting off with the fall is not what you want to see for Michigan State. She's got to brush it off, though, and finish this routine strong. off the 5-4 sophomore. Just kind of, how big is it for Michigan State for her to start big? Yeah, it's it's really tough to start with the fall because as you know, you can only drop one score. So they're hoping that they can drop that score, but they still have five more girls to go. So all those five girls must hit their routines with no falls in order for them to drop that low score with that fall. So that almost in a sense puts more pressure in your mind, especially going next. Definitely, yeah, definitely. It puts more pressure because you want your team to succeed and you want to keep, you want to turn that snowball around into a positive thing and get your team hitting and not falling off the beam. 
Dylan Wissay on the vault. Yurchenko full. And it's a great height. Just a pretty big step on the landing. impact of a fall on any apparatus. It is five tenths of a point. So if you fall off that beam, if you fall off the bar, or if you land on your butt on the floor, you get automatically 5.5 deducted from your score. It's Delaney Harkness, 5'4 sophomore, getting ready to go. This is a huge spot for her. She is in charge of turning this momentum around after that fall. Nine point one from Khalifi. As you see that impact from that fall, she definitely had the five tenths taken off of her score for that. your dance and with your skills. One pinky toe off and you're off that beam. Beautiful series, no wobbles. She's looking really confident up there. Associate head coach Nicole Jones does a great job with this choreography on the beam. An aerial, beautiful routine. That should be a great start to Michigan State's turnaround on the balance beam as she hopes to leave a lasting impact on her teammates that still have to go. How much preparation and hard work does it go into getting that routine down leading up to this competition? Yeah, it's really hard with beam because the environment really makes an impact on what you're feeling. Um, personally, I shake a lot, and doing skills on a four-inch beam when you're shaking is a lot different than doing them in practice. So I'm sure that the coaches have a lot of strategic plans that get these girls prepared for events like this when their nerves are high, but nothing really compares to being on the beam at a meet. So it's all about channeling those nerves into making a great beam routine. Is there certain things that you can do to channel those nerves, or is it just kind of... I'm, you just got to be confident in yourself, which it's really hard on an event like beam because anything can happen in the slightest thing that you change from practice to the beat could be could mean a fall could mean you get hurt it's literally a pinky toe off the side of the beam and you're off so it's really important to capture those details and try to let not let the nerves get to you too much as Harkness gets a 9.7 so routine to try and get the ball rolling for Michigan State That is an extremely unique skill. I don't know if I've ever seen that competed on a beam before. She's got so much power. Little turn. Series, a handspring, handspring layout, beautiful. Great height on that, and exquisite form. Trying to 
finish this routine off strong. Coming up on her dismount. Round off, double full, stuck landing, wow. Oh, They're definitely going to like that one. You'd rate, so I'm assuming you'd rate it well then. So after a rough start for Michigan State, a couple of solid performances after. Definitely getting that momentum back. Here's this super unique skill. I think you'd call it a two-footed front aerial. Dismount, a double full dismount, stuck cold, no movement in those feet. Teammates are loving that one. Over to Illinois State. Now back over to Bowling Green on the four routines that finishes up. Just what Michigan State needed. Well deserved. Sometimes you get rewarded for doing unique things like Steven did with that front aerial. It's also a lot more risky, but if you're confident in it, then it's worth it. 9.9 for Steven. Here's Leah Mitchell. those people and it's a very rare breed but she looks like she's having fun on the balance beam. Round off one and a half dismount stuck. Wow. She looks bumped up before she's going to that event. It looked like she was zoned in and ready and big performance there from Leah Mitchell. Such a sigh of relief when you land that dismount on beam. You just want to get off of there so bad. But Leah kind of looks like she likes it up there. So great routine from her.
side. While it may not look that difficult, you are taking your eyes off the beam, so that is a little bit scary, not knowing when that beam is going to hit you next. First series of backhand spring layout step out, strong and confident landing. Round off into a double back, and she fights for that landing, that college finish. Her teammates, her coaches, they all love it. They are pumped up. Another big performance after the rough start for Michigan State. The teammates Definitely. just keep on coming up clutch. And that's what they train for. They train to turn the momentum the other way. That's all about the team aspect of college gymnastics. Here's that leap series again really have to spot the beam. Really challenging dismount. Again, she does not need to do that. But looks like she likes doing it, so why not? All smiles over there on beam. One more routine to go. Another high score, a 9.85 for Skyler. What a big performance. Steven and Mitchell at 9.9s, and Harkness at a 9.725. Here's Bailey Garcia, the anchor on this event. This is the toughest spot in all the on every single event. An anchor on me. Preparing for her series. And spring layout step out. Beautiful. And a smile to finish it. Front aerial into a split jump. Beautiful. She is being very sharp in her dance, which is what the judges love to see. Her split leaps are way over 180. No deductions on those. Bulls and another stuck landing. Wow, what a turnaround on beam for Michigan State. Spartans are pumped. We talked about that pressure going in and they just keep on answering. They channeled that pressure into beautiful beam routines.
very solid hand sprint layout series. Great dancer up on that balance beam. Switch the split jump. one and a half. Decent size hop on the landing, but I think she should be happy with that routine as the exhibition spot. Spartans will finish out with a 49.3 on beam. Bars at a 48.975 and on vault, a 48.925. That 49.3 on beam is huge. Beam is not an event that is usually your highest scoring event, but the Spartans made the best of it today and earned that 49.3. What sort of things do you think she's saying in that situation? I honestly think that she's really proud of them for coming back after that rough start, as they're celebrating a little bit right now. That is exactly what they train for. They train under high pressure so that they can hit the routines when they need to. Step on the floor on her one and a half punch front tuck. Just a quick little tidbit. Bowling Green is four and fifteen all time against Michigan State, but have won the last three four meetings, including 2018 in East Lansing, the last time they competed against one another. The Bowling Green is 14 and seven all time against Illinois State, including a win last year at Anderson Arena. does she say to calm her down? Is there more of a confidence kind of boosting thing, like you got this? Yeah, I'm sure it's different for each gymnast, but telling them their corrections that they get in practice or making them breathe a couple times definitely will get you calmed down and um, take some time for the judges to get your scores until they're ready to bring you on the floor. Judges longer to compute a score. 
or they might have to look in the rule books or talk to the other judge about how much deductions to take off for a fall. Looks like she scored an 8.6 and an 8.55. Two judges, and they will average the scores of both the judges to get a final score. The importance of having those two judges is that they're at different angles on the floor and on the other events, so that one judge might see something really major that the other judge misses. So if they give one girl a really high score, the other judge might give him a low score. So Taylor Jensen, the anchor for Bowling Green, finished with a score of an 8.575. You can tell she's a little bit more reserved in her dance. It's still a beautiful dance, just a different type. Back two and a half twists. fun in college gymnastics. You get to mix up a bunch of different musics to your liking. A front full front pike for her front tumbling pass. I really liked that one. I think her team did too. Doing a solid job, and that will conclude the third rotation as Michigan State will finish it off on floor exercise. Illinois State will move over to the uneven bars, and Bowling Green will move over to vault. How big is this for the Spartans to do well on the floor routine for them to finish off the... Well, I'm sure they are looking forward to this event. This is definitely their strongest event. They love to dance and they love to show their personalities and they have a lot of powerful talent. So they are really going to be showing it off here at Jenison Fieldhouse tonight. Steven with a 9.9 .9, as well as Leah Mitchell and Bailey Garcia finished with a 9.925. Some fantastic scores from MSU on that. Fantastic. Spartans currently have a 147.2. As we will take a quick break, you're watching Gymnastics on BTN+.
Welcome back to Jensen Fieldhouse as Michigan State currently leads 147.2 over Illinois and Bowling Green. Illinois State has 145.425. Bowling Green has 143.75. As let's look at some of the team results from each event. For the floor exercise, Bowling Green Chan had a 9.74. McNamara had a 9.8, so those are some solid scores there. And then Jensen and Castiglia had a, what appears to be a fall. Yeah, definitely those, whenever your score drops into the, below the nine, it's usually a major mistake or a fall. And now Illinois State for vault, just kind of looking at those scores, what's your thoughts on those? Yeah, definitely J-Mac probably had a fall or at least a bunch, a bunch of steps out of that vault. Same with Labatt, pretty low scores for them. Otherwise, the 9-7s, pretty controlled landings, pretty solid vaults. And then finally for Michigan State, the beam, a fantastic performance right there. 49.3, Harkness, Stefan, Mitchell, Schulte, Garcia, all really good across the board. Yeah. It's hard to describe that beam rotation. Starting off with that 9-1 and then having to come back and rally. They did more than rally. They exceeded anybody's expectations with all those 9-9s nine and above. And after, after Michigan State will finish off with the floor exercise, Cindy Ewing, the senior, will lead it off. And then Weidman, Stefan, Harkness, Hoflich, and Schulte, the freshman, is the anchor going to be a fun floor rotation. All of these names, they love to dance. They're going to get this crowd involved. I'm sure they're super pumped. For Bowling Green on vault, the competition order is Harsh, McNamara, Bannister, Wildbuck, Applenick, and Jensen for the anchor for Bowling Green. over to the Redbirds of Illinois State over on uneven bars to conclude the match. Deck Brew, Laster, Kip, Doctor, Labatt, and McGowan to finish it off for Illinois State. So obviously this is the last event for the meet. What kind of, I mean, you gotta figure that you're at least sort of tired at this point, and then it's definitely the longest routine for all of them as well. How, what kind of thought process goes through your mind as a gymnast, just making sure to lock down and finish off strong? Yeah, it definitely helps being on floor, like I said. It's a lot of high energy routines, and Michigan State is, has a great strength in that, and they use their dancing, their energy, to um, kind of cover up their tiredness for the end of the meet. Just being on the last event in general, you get excited that you're almost done, you had a great meet. Using that energy to finish off strong is important. You in the start for the Spartans. Lena Cartwright with the choreography. She does a great job encapsulating all their personalities. First pass, front double full, beautiful landing. A lot of emotions going through your head during a floor routine. Sometimes you're smiling, sometimes you're preparing for your next pass and you're really serious. draws you in. Back one and a half, front full. And she'll just do two passes today, but that was a, an amazing routine. She had so much fun with it. As her team waits to give her each a hug. 
you heard the song choice there. What kind of personality does that show for her? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of a mysterious personality, but she also incorporated a lot of smiles and a lot of cheery, upbeat music, too. As you see those front tumbling passes, you are allowed to step forward. There is no deduction for that. Anywhere where you're landing forward, you can take one step, but only one foot is allowed to move for no deduction. And then for the back tumbling passes, same thing. You're allowed to one step back. Code of Gymnastics gives you that, so you're not breaking your ankles on landings every single time. It takes a little bit of the pressure out of your legs. Stefan still leads the vault overall for the meet for MSU with a 9.85. It's like a little bit of a grip slip on bars for Illinois State. That is definitely not a good feeling. Those grips, they help you hold on to the bar, and when it's not feeling right or it's not on the bar, it's definitely a scary feeling. So she had to come down on that. Pass over on the handstand. Sometimes you're fine for the handstand too hard. You just have too much momentum and you fall off. At the moment for the floor exercise, J Mac currently leads the meet for Illinois State with a 9.875 for balance meet. It was Bailey Garcia with a fantastic score. Of 9.925, and then and then for uneven bars, Joey Jackard at a 9.85. Good finish to her routine, really unique dismount with that eagle grip to a front flipping dismount instead of a back like you normally see. Judges are talking about something on the floor. What sort of things do you come together and talk about? Is it more of just a kind of disagreement with scoring or what goes on with that? Yeah, it's definitely a disagreement. Um, like I said earlier, one judge probably some, saw something major that the other judge didn't. And so they're trying to go over her requirements, anything that they missed to try and come to a better decision and find a score that she deserves. I have a feeling that they are probably talking about her requirements because she, uh, Cindy only did two passes, which is allowed, but you do have to fulfill a couple requirements. And it's harder to do in two passes. That's why usually gymnasts do three passes to complete those requirements. So I'm sure they're comparing notes on that. Weidman continues to wait her turn. Looks like the judges figured it out. While we wait, here's Bully Green on the ball. Your chain of ball, really solid landing. Good block, good amplitude, good distance. So a 
725 for Ewing. Solid score, solid way to start off the event for Michigan State. challenging to train for that. By the last pass, as you can see, her legs probably were jello. She could probably barely feel them, but that's what you train for. You have to know how to do your last pass when you're super, super tired and out of breath. And how can you train to do that thing? Is it just going through your entire routine over and over again? Yeah, it's definitely getting repetitions in. And like every other sport, um, you have to run and you have to do drills and practice, 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 basically, until it gets maybe a little bit easier, but it's always, always takes your breath away a little bit. There's a unique vault there. Almost a stuck landing. She really fought for that. And just looking at the results for Bowling Green. For Vault, Harsh had a 9.65. McNamara had a 9.65. Bannister scores dropped to the 9.6. Wellbacher, 9.75. Evelynick. 9.8 and Jensen with the 9.8. So just looking at the scores, what's kind of your thoughts? Pretty solid scores. I mean, without having those huge 10 0 star values that a lot of the upper level SEC Big Ten schools have, those high scores like 9.7s are really impressive with only a 9.95 or lower star value. Bowling Green will finish off the meet with a 192.4. State and Illinois State still looking to finish up. And that final score is out of 200. So if they got 10.0s on every single event, every rotation, they would hit 200. So that 192.4 is pretty impressive. You talked about how good this Michigan State team is and whatnot. What kind of a score is expected from them night in and night out for all their meets? Yeah, well, Michigan State was preseason -rank, pre ranked 36, so they definitely weren't expected to come out with these big 9-9 scores that they are now. But I think that coaches and 
Gymnastics fans around the world are expecting these 9-9s throughout the season. They look strong, they look confident, and it's only the second meet of the season, so they've got a lot of work and time to improve. It's only gonna go up from here for Michigan State. So you see that double layout pike down a little bit for Illinois State. We're all good team. So far, Mass and Kip at a 9.25, and Isabella Crew at a 9.325. As Gabrielle Steven goes. She is an extremely powerful gymnast. Fun routine, starting off right here. Front double pull into a front tuck. Amazing, that is an E pass. The hardest it gets. Super cool choreography, she's loving it. Double full, amazing landing, so controlled. That got a smile out of her. Her team loved that one. I'm sure the judges will too. Super, super solid, controlled landings, great dance. It's always fun to see your teammates just cheer you on like that. Always encouraging. Definitely. This Michigan State team has a great team aspect. The coaches have definitely worked on that. And you can tell by this performance here tonight. her team in the background trying to give her some momentum for that stick nine point nine for Gabrielle well wow. deserved Melissa by the way had a nine point six two five and Ewing a nine point seven two five Michigan State team is just throwing out these nine nines everywhere. No one really expected this, but they are showing us up. They're performing amazing tonight. Here's Delaney Harkness. Huge full in. That is also an E tumbling pass. One of the hardest. She is a great performer. Making eye contact with the crowd and her teammates is huge. Ending with a B 
Hoogle, front layout, front Rudy. That floor team looked easy for her. Aww. Teammates celebrate, smiles all around. and a 9.85 for the two to a 9.8 for Harkness. Here's Illinois State on bars. Hoflick and Schulte still to go for Michigan State. Wow, double pike. She loves that landing.
crowd's loving that score as well. As we look over at Illinois State on uneven bars, the crew had a 9.325, Kip 9.25, Doctor 9.7, and then Labbeck led the way with a 9.775. Pop with the music, I think. Skyla Schulte gets ready to go on her routine. This is the grand finale, folks. She is one to watch on this floor. So much energy, so much fun. She looks like she's playing on a playground. She's having so much fun. There's definitely a reason why we talked about her in the open. Young freshman, it'll be a lot of fun to watch right here. Zoned in. Both of her parents are Michigan State alumni, so I'm sure she is proud to wear that Spartan on her chest. the meet for Michigan State. Jenison loves it. Michigan State team loves it. Coaches love it. I'd say a successful overall meet for the Spartans. Indeed, the first time the Spartans have a home meet since January 30th of 2021. Let's another look at Schulte. It's not an easy pass. She just floats. It's front through into a double back. Energetic ending. So Illinois State will finish with a 192.625. State awaits Skyla's score, hoping for a big one. Either way, they're satisfied, I assume. 9.85 from one judge, and a 9.9 .9 from another. Big performance to anchor out there for the freshman. Huge honor to get an anchor role as a freshman. Your team really trusted you, your coaches trust you, and I think she pulled through for them. So a 9.875 will be the final one for Schulte. So Illinois finished. Illinois State, excuse me, finished with 192.625. Bowling Green with 192.4. Michigan State will take the match as we wait for the final scores to be updated. But Beam was such a big event for these Spartans, especially starting the way that they did on that event and then coming all the way back from that in a big fashion.
we're going to take a quick break. And, and when we come back, we're going to wrap it up and go over the wards. Michigan State will take this one. A big time score, 196.425, beating last, last week's score. And then Illinois State with 192.625. Bowling Green rounds it out with 192.40. So the Spartans will move up to 4 0. We will take a quick break. You're watching Gymnastics on Big Ten Plus.
back to East Lansing. Now we're going to send it down to the Michigan State Public Address announcer for the team and individual awards.
bowling grade 192.4. A fantastic performance, especially on B. What was kind of your thought process throughout the week for Michigan State? Obviously, they struggled to start that game and then they just pushed all the way through and continue to struggle through the floor. Schulte, Steven, Marcus, all fantastic all around. Just kind of your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, Delaney, Skyler, and Gabby are all underclassmen. They're all sophomores or freshmen. So coming out like this and performing in the all around spot at home is an amazing accomplishment. You've been watching gymnastics on Big Ten Plus. I'm Owen Ozos. And for Abby Larson, thank you.